I'm Dr. Dan Newsom, uh, I'm a naturopathic physician, osteopath, and a doctor of oriental medicine, and I welcome you to our video here today. Um, today we're going to talk about the funnel, alright? The funnel has a lot to do with detox, but it also has a lot to do with what's missing in medicine today. All right, so we're gonna discuss this. Let's start off, we'll jump right in, all right? So here at the top, we have cellular health, all right? Next, we have tissue integrity. Then we have lymphatic drainage. Then we have liver and kidney metabolism. And then colon health. All right. So let's talk about this for a minute. In medicine, okay, in conventional Western medicine, every treatment is for subduing or treating a symptom. Okay, in health, we have cellular health, which is cellular metabolism, okay, and how things are getting in and out of the cell, how things, how the cell is functioning, how it's working, how, uh, you know, and that's not just, you know, any cell, it's every cell, okay? So you get your brain cells, your heart cells, your liver cells, your bone cells, your muscle cells, your hormone producing cells, you get all these cells, okay? And we have 75 trillion cells in our body, and when they don't operate right, they cause symptoms, okay? When you have cellular dysfunction, it causes everything else to go awry, correct? And this is where medicine does a lot of work, okay? And even nutritional medicine and, you know, nutritional healing and things like this, we do a lot of work on cellular health. Um, tissue integrity, okay, the health of your muscles, your bones, your ligaments, your tendons, your heart, your blood vessels, your organs, all these different tissues, correct? Okay, their integrity determines your health, correct? All right, so let's, let's think about this. In, in illness, most of your symptoms are going to occur from dysfunction in this area, okay? Most of your symptoms are going to come about because something's wrong in here, okay? Now, when something goes wrong here, that propels you into an inflammatory state, okay? Either the cells aren't respirating properly, okay? And if they're not respirating properly, they don't burn energy well, they don't produce energy well, and they don't metabolize things very well. Okay, when that happens, waste doesn't leave the cells very well, and nutrition doesn't get into the cells very well. Okay, if that's happening, we lose tissue integrity. Okay, once that happens, the tissues start to swell up. And when tissue swells up, if lymphatic drainage isn't occurring properly, this tish, the tissues just stay swollen, okay? And the longer they stay swollen, the more they degenerate, okay? So if the lymphatic system isn't draining our tissues, waste and toxins build up in our tissues, and inflammation happens then as a result, and as that takes place, uh, we lose tissue integrity. Things don't work as well, okay? Now, if the lymphatic system gets full, okay, 
your lymphatic system, visualize your lymphatic system as the sewer system in your neighborhood, all right, or in your town, all right? So if the lymphatic system isn't draining right, and that sewer system in your body isn't draining right, things back up, okay? Think of the sewer connected to your house didn't drain the waste away from your house. What would happen to your house? Well, that's what cells are. Cells are like your house, and so if the tissue that contains all these cells isn't being drained properly and the sewer system isn't working right, okay, the cells can't flush the toilet. The cells can't take the trash out. Okay, if that's happening, things start to swell up in the tissues, okay? Tissues start to take on water and fluid, retain fluid, in order to dilute the toxic waste that's accumulating within them, all right? Now, the lymphatic system has to drain into the kidneys and the liver. If the kidneys and the liver aren't filtering the blood in the lymphatic system, the lymphatic system doesn't have anywhere to dump, okay? So if the the sewer system in your city never <laughs> went back to the water treatment center and got filtered, um, all that waste would just keep circulating all throughout the city. Okay, and this is what happens in chronic disease. Now, as the liver and kidneys get toxic and, uh, you know, if they're not well fed, Okay, they become nutritionally deficient, and when they become nutritionally deficient, they don't metabolize things properly because their cells are missing nuts and bolts. Okay, when that happens, they don't filter things properly, okay, and things have to go back into the bloodstream, back into the, the tissues, gets all worked back through this, the system, and comes back around and re-intoxicates the liver and the kidneys, okay? Now, your liver is what dumps a majority of the solid waste and the heavy things out of your blood and lymphatic system, okay? Your blood is carrying uh, waste uh, dumped into it via the lymphatic system, uh, gets filtered through your, your liver, uh, think of this, your liver filters every drop of blood in your body every three minutes, okay? Everything circulating throughout your body filters through your liver every three minutes. <laughs> That's amazing. Your kidneys filter somewhere right around 300 gallons of fluid a day, okay? Massive, massive amount of filtration happening through these tiny little organs, right? And if they're missing nuts and bolts, they don't have the nutrients in order to operate properly, they can't do their job properly. All right? Now, I get back to the liver. The liver filters out heavy things, heavy metals, uh, all kinds of different salts. There are a lot of the fat-soluble um, toxins in our, that we get exposed to get converted into water-soluble toxins and flushed out of the liver via the bile ducts in the bile salts, okay? All that is well and good as long as the colon <laughs> is moving, okay? If the colon isn't moving, everything leaving the liver gets reabsorbed into your bloodstream. Okay, that's really, really, really bad, all right? Um, bowel movements. Let me just say a real quick thing on bowel movements, okay? Um, if food's going in, space needs to be created for that food. If you're eating three times a day and having one bowel movement a day, you're storing two meals in your, di in your digestive tract somewhere, okay? If you eat, you should have a bowel movement. That's how it works. That's how it should work. That's how proper metabolism is. Uh, I don't care if you're skinny or not, okay? Those, the, uh, the digestive system is about a 30 foot long system. The small intestine is about an inch round. 
the large intestines about four inches round, okay, and that that colon's about ten feet long. So it's four inches round, about ten feet long. Uh, that's as long as there's no inflammation in in it. Also, think about this for a minute. That four inch round, ten foot long tube can expand four times its resting diameter before it ruptures. Okay. So think of that. You could you can pack a heck of a lot of stuff into a 16 inch round, 10 foot long tube. Yeah, you know I mean? right? You follow me? Okay. So let's go back to detox. Okay. Detox. Here is where, in my opinion, about 90% of all natural medicine practitioners go awry, okay? They detox backwards, okay? Remember how we talked about cellular health, and tissue integrity, lymphatic drainage, kidney liver metabolism, and then colon health, right? Right, we, we talked in, in that, uh, that sequence. Well, detox should never start up here ever okay because think about this if you get your cells to detoxify where is that waste going to go it's gonna go right out into the tissues if the tissues aren't draining properly and the lymphatic system is plugged up you're only going to damage your tissues by detoxifying your cells first Okay, you're going to cause all kinds of oxidative stress. You're going to create massive amounts of free radicals and inflammation. If you try to detox on a cellular level first, okay, that's wrong way to do it, okay? Um, now, if the lymphatic system is, you know, if the sewer system is backed up, the tissues have no place to detoxify. So, so detoxing, uh, a, even going back to you know, detoxing a liver or a kidney or, or those types of things before the rest of the process I'm going to talk about is, uh, is potentially bad for those organs. You can stress them more than they're capable of handling. All right? So... Lymphatic drainage has to be opened up, okay? This is one exit and it has to be open. This is so everything that's accumulated up here can start to move and drain out, okay? You can't detox things. Um, let's, let's talk about this for a minute. Let's talk about your kitchen. Okay, let's go back to the kitchen. Okay, let's say we had a big party at your house and everybody was up real late. We ended up just falling asleep wherever we were sitting and we wake up in the morning, we go in the kitchen, the kitchen's full of paper plates and food and no one cleaned up anything, but everybody's hungry and we wanna make eggs for breakfast, right? Well, there's a process we have to go through to clean up that, that kitchen, no? Okay, so first thing we go, we go over to the garbage can. The garbage can is overflowing. Okay, what do we got to do? Well, we got to take that trash out, okay, because there's accumulated waste in the trash can. And we can't dump anything else into the trash can until we eliminate the accumulated waste, right? So we take that accumulated waste out. Okay, we come back in. We got a fresh new garbage bag in the garbage can, right? Now we go and we start cleaning the countertops. Take the, the, the accumulated waste on the countertops, right? The, the old plates, the used up plates that are dirty and, and the, the cups that are dirty and things like that. We start accumulating those and we put them into the trash can, right? And that trash can is full again. So what do we gotta do? Before we go scrubbing down everything, we take the trash out one more time. Okay, we take that trash out, we get rid of that. Now we have an empty trash can, okay? Now we can take and we start getting all the, 
crumbs and the little bits and pieces of food, the food that maybe has gone bad so if, you know overnight or whatnot. We start accumulating all that and we get that all down in the trash can, right? Then we go back, we spray the counter down, we, we scrub it, we wash the dishes, everything goes down the drain nice and fine. Before too long, we've got a nice clean kitchen, right? I've done this a couple times, so I, I, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, um, if we equate that to this process, okay, this is our body's drainage system, and if this isn't open, the lymphatic system, if the lymphatic system is not draining properly, we can't detoxify our cells. We can't detoxify our tissues, okay? So how do we get this draining? Well, first off, we gotta take the trash out. Okay, you have to take the trash out. Okay, if this is not moving properly, if the colon is not moving after every meal, okay, your colon is part of your digestive tract, okay, it's not just a trash can, right? I'm using that analogy, but you, you okay, your colon is designed to absorb things, okay? Now, um, in medicine, prior to the transdermal patches in the, the transdermal creams and all those types of things, okay, the second fastest way to get a drug into someone's system was via a rectal suppository. Okay, this is, this, you could get a drug to the bloodstream faster with a hard tablet in the rectum than you could a shot in the arm. Okay, a, a, intramuscular injection or a subcutaneous injection into the skin wouldn't get a, a drug into the bloodstream as fast as a suppository in the colon. Okay, think about that for a minute. Wow! So your colon is designed to absorb. Okay, it's just like the rest of your digestive tract. It's designed to absorb stuff. Okay, so if you have waste accumulating in your colon, okay, if you got 5, 10, 15, 20 meals accumulated in your colon that you haven't eliminated, okay, what's all that waste doing? Where's it going? It's going right back into your system. It's flowing into your bloodstream and contaminating all of this. All right, so we got to get the trash going out of the body. Trash has to move out. We have to eliminate the accumulated waste in the GI tract. That has to go. Once that starts moving, the liver can start dumping things into the GI tract properly. This takes a massive amount of stress off the kidneys. Okay? Because whatever the, the liver doesn't filter out of the bloodstream, the kidneys get hit with, okay? So if your liver is not working quite right, and it's not fil filtering everything out of the system very well, everything it's missing has to get picked up by the kidneys. So if the liver isn't working right, the kidneys get put under a lot of stress, okay? And that, we don't want that, okay? So, in order for the liver to properly drain well, the colon has to be moving. We have to, the trash has to be consistently leaving the system so that the liver can drain down into the colon. All right, this is super, super important. So, in the detox sequence, we have to get the colon moving. We have to increase the amount of bowel movements that are occurring. Okay, that has to happen first. It's the very first thing that can, before you can detox anything else, you got to get this colon cleansed. <laughs> okay, we got to get the colon cleaned out. The waste that's accumulated in the colon has to be moving out. Transit time has to be much shorter. We can't afford for things to sit in our colon and rot. If it does, we absorb 
all that nasty toxin waste okay all that waste all those nasty toxins we absorb that so we got to get the colon moving number one as the colon starts to move that loosens up everything in the rest of the system and this opens up okay the lymphatic system starts to drain <clears throat> once the 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 uh, the analogy I learned in naturopathic medical school was that when the colon is moving properly, it creates like a vacuum on all the toxins that have accumulated in the rest of the system. So as this starts to move and we get the trash, you know, the trash starts being taken out, it causes the lymphatic system to start to drain. Okay, because there's space. We've created space in the system. By eliminating the trash, we create space in the system and the lymphatic, the sewer system can start to drain. Okay, and it does this, drains into the liver. Liver then can properly detoxify itself and eliminate because it, it is not just dumping into the intestines and re-receiving the old waste again. Okay, so... Colon first, that loosens up the lymphatic system, and then we can even do things to speed up lymphatic drainage, okay? By speeding up lymphatic drainage, we start draining the tissues and the cells, okay? At that point, we can do two things, okay? Once we've got this moving and this draining, we got the colon moving, we got the lymphatic system draining. We can go back and start to support the liver and the kidneys. We support the liver and the kidneys and they start filtering the blood in the lymphatic system, which starts drawing toxic materials and waste away from our tissues and away from our cells. Okay, if we work, no pun intended, from the bottom up, we get the best results, okay, when it comes to detox. You got to start by eliminating through the colon. Create that vacuum in the system. Get everything moving down away from your vital organs, okay? Getting it away from the system. Get the trash out of the system. Okay, as that happens, now, uh, let's say someone has heavy metal poisoning. They have uh, uh, some other you know, environmental toxin or uh, a, uh, a chemical toxicity or a chemical sensitivity, okay? If we get through this process of just getting the, the liver, the kidneys, the lymphatic system, the colon all draining properly, it makes whatever detoxification we have to do up here in the cells and the tissues way easier, okay? And you don't necessarily have to get more sick to get better, okay? If you follow this process, uh, your body will, when it is strong enough to deal with some sort of toxin or some sort of microbe or whatnot, it will create symptoms as it fights those things off, okay? As it fights off a microbe or it, it exerts itself picking up and moving those heavy toxins in the system, that creates all kinds of stress. Okay, when we are under stress, we have symptoms. So, yes, when you're detoxing, you will most likely experience some of those stress symptoms. We call it Hertzheimer effect or healing crisis or those types of things. But it, it doesn't have to be terribly severe. Okay, if the process is followed properly, the body knows how to detoxify. It's designed to do this, okay? And so by working with the processes I'm talking about here, getting the colon moving first, helping the lymphatic drainage occur second, then working with the liver and kidneys, supporting them so they actually filter our, our blood and our lymphatic fluid very well. That creates nice, clean blood and lymphatic fluid to flow through our, our organs, through our tissues, and clean up our cells. Okay, so th this is our funnel, and this is how we go about detoxifying. So I hope you enjoyed this, 
and thank you for tuning in.